Hi everyone and welcome to this video. In the last few videos we've recorded some sounds using the Tascam and then we've also done a little bit of sampling as well and now it's time to get these into the DAW and have a look at them and then edit them for use with later productions. So all we've got to do to do this is use the command and shift function to navigate to the file where we've got our sounds and then from here you can see I've got quite a few. I've not got all of them in this folder yet but this will do for now and we can just drag these into the DAW and I can either drop these here on a single track or if I press the command function then you can see it spreads every single sound to its own track so that's obviously quite important if you do get into the editing of each individual sound then you're going to want them on a individual track each so that's the best way to do that but for now I'm just going to leave them on a single track and we can start thinking about the different ways we can manipulate these samples so there's two sort of main ways of doing this and we have the approach of the heavy processing so this is really manipulating and really warping these samples and being really drastic with how we use them so they're not really recognizable as the found sound that they started off as or the other approach is the more soft approach where we want to use the found sound as it is so looking at that approach first the main sort of areas that we've got is we have the warping and messing around with the timing of these different clips and obviously if we do that in a heavily processed way then we'd be doing that to much more uh, drastic extremes but in this case we might just want to warp them slightly more in time and then we also have transposition and that's just changing the pitch and between the octaves or the semitones so if we're going to do this just using it as it is then we might want to just nudge things so they fit a bit more with the track we've then got fades and once again in this subtle way all we're trying to do with fades is things like removing the clicks or potentially removing a little bit of the ambience when we're slicing up the sound or what we could do is we could use a gate which would do something similar then other things we could do is we could compress the signal just to keep the attack portion in line with the rest of the signal and bring the sound up a little bit so it's easier to hear the entire sound and then we've also got things like sidechain compression just to give the ambience a little bit of a pump so it goes into rhythm with the music and then finally we've got the reverse function and I'm sure you're all aware what that does we can just flip the samples around so they're in reverse and that can give us a nice sort of push and pull sucking effect into the next transient of the next sound. So those are the main ones that I'd look at for subtle manipulation and the heavier processes we're going to go into in a, another video but let's have a look now starting at warping. So the first thing to do with warping that we need to mention is if we go to the preferences we have to make sure that we haven't got auto warp long samples on. So what you need to do is go into your preferences, record warp launch, and we can see we've got this button here, auto warp long samples, and we've also got our short samples and the default warp mode. So it's up to you how you want this to work, but it's just something to bear in mind because if I take this Febreze sample across here, we have a listen to it. Take the warp mode off. No matter what I do with the tempo, you can see this is stretching out, but the reason this is stretching is because it's, it's keeping in time. So it's not actually going to change the signal at all. However, if we have warp on, then this warping engine and this warp mode is going to affect the signal. And because of that, this now means as we move this up and down, the loop length is going to stay the same. So you can see the loop stays the same, but the time changes and we get the change of the sound. You can't really notice it at high BPMs, but if I pull it right the way down, you're going to really hear artifacts start to come to the signal. And the nature of these artifacts, which can be really useful, especially when we're doing uh, extremely low BPMs or low transposition values, uh, the lower we go down in these octaves, the more we're going to get these sort of interesting tones and timbres which we can use. So just to show you how the different warp engines affect this,
So I'll put this back to 124. And so you've heard a rough example of all the different warp modes. I'm not going to go into too much detail with them, but as you can see, just from looking at this, you can see we can go directly up and down by double. We've got our further information depending on our warp mode here. And then we've also got our transposition as well. And roughly speaking, Beats is going to keep the transient intact. So a good example of using Beats. If we go for ice cracking, this should have some good transients. So we play this and we want to preserve these transients no matter how we warp it. Then we choose the Beats warp mode. Whereas this wouldn't be so useful on a musical idea or a full track. And then we've also got this preservation value here. So if I set this, then what we can do is we can pull this down and it's going to only preserve these transients here, which is really handy if we don't want any of this ambient signal and we just want to catch that last bit of a transient. Maybe we want to use it as a hat, a shaker or a clap or something. And then this is a quick way to isolate the signal. We can use this even further, say if we want to build a quick rhythm and put a beat underneath it, then we can go command and A, that selects the entire loop as we can see here. And then we can go command and I, and that's going to place a warp marker on each of the individual warp points. And then from here, it goes command shift and U, and we can warp this however we want. We could also do the right click menu and you can see we get our warp options here as well. If I do this, then it's going to clear these warping markers. But in this case, I want them. So go command A again, command I, and then we can just warp these into time. And I wouldn't say it's a good idea to warp them completely because it's going to sound very robotic, depending on what sort of genre you're making. However, it can just really quickly get something that sounds a lot more usable within a beat. So for example, we loop that up, you can see that's now looped all the way along. We could then take our kick. And there we go, we've got something that's instantly usable and then we could affect the decay. Just using this. And if we did want to have the ambience, then we could also very quickly grab something like a compressor and just get a bit of side chain happening on that signal. Side chain it to our kick, which is in one audio. And instantly you can hear, we've managed to breathe a little bit of rhythm into this little loop, and we've got it bouncing nicely in time and working on 16th notes with our track. So in this video, we've covered a few subtle ways we can manipulate our found sound by warping, transposing, and using the different warp engines. And in the next video, we're gonna build a bit further on these techniques.